In physics and classical mechanics, the three-body problem is the problem of taking an initial set of data that specifies the positions, masses and velocities of three bodies for some particular point in time and then determining the motions of the three bodies. In accordance with the laws of classical mechanics, the three-body problem is a special case of the n-body problem. Historically, the first specific three-body problem to receive extended study was the one involving the Moon, the Earth and the Sun. In an extended modern sense, a three-body problem is a class of problems in classical or quantum mechanics that model the motion of three particles. History the gravitational problem of three bodies in its traditional sense dates in substance from 1687, when Isaac Newton published his Principia. In Proposition 66 of Book 1 of the Principia, and its 22 corollaries, Newton took the first steps in the definition and study of the problem of the movements of three massive bodies subject to their mutually perturbing gravitational attractions. In Propositions 25-35 of Book 3, Newton also took the first steps in applying his results of Proposition 66 to the lunar theory. The motion of the Moon under the gravitational influence of the Earth and the Sun. The problem became of technical importance in the 1720s, as an accurate solution would be applicable to navigation, specifically for the determination of longitude at sea. This problem was addressed by Amerigo Vespucci and by Galileo Galileo before being solved by John Harrison's invention of the marine chronometer. Before the chronometer became available, Vespucci had used, in 1499, knowledge of the position of the Moon to determine his position in Brazil. However the accuracy of the lunar theory was low, due to the perturbing effect of the Sun, and planets, on the motion of the Moon around the Earth. Jean de Lambert and Alexis Clairaut, who developed a long-standing rivalry, both attempted to analyze the problem in some degree of generality, and by the use of differential equations to be solved by successive approximations, they submitted their competing first analyses to the Académie Royale des Sciences in 1747. It was in connection with these researches, in Paris, in the 1740s, that the name of three-body problem began to be commonly used. An account published in 1761 by Jean de Lambert indicates that the name was first used in 1747. In 1887, mathematicians Heinrich Bruns and Henry Poincaré showed that there is no general analytical solution for the three-body problem given by algebraic expressions and integrals. The motion of three bodies is generally non-repeating, except in special cases. Examples Gravitational systems A prominent example of the classical three-body problem is the movement of a planet with a satellite around a star. In most cases such a system can be factorized, considering the movement of the complex system around a star as a single particle, then Considering the movement of the satellite around the planet, neglecting the movement around the star. In this case, the problem is simplified to the two-body problem. However, the effect of the star on the movement of the satellite around the planet can be considered as a perturbation. A three-body problem also arises from the situation of a spacecraft and two relevant celestial bodies, e.g., the Earth and the Moon, such as when considering a free return trajectory around the Moon, or other translunar injection. While a spaceflight involving a gravity assist tends to be at least a four-body problem, once far away from the Earth when Earth's gravity becomes negligible, it is approximately a three-body problem. The general statement for the three-body problem is as follows. At an instant in time, for vector positions and masses, three coupled second-order differential equations exist. A complete solution for a particular three-body problem provides the positions for all three particles for all time given three initial positions and initial velocities. Circular restricted three-body problem In the circular restricted three-body problem two massive bodies move in circular orbits around their common center of mass and the third mass is small and moves in the same plane. With respect to a rotating reference frame, the two co-orbiting bodies are stationary. 
and the third can be stationary as well at the Lagrangian points, or orbit around them, for instance on a horseshoe orbit. It can be useful to consider the effective potential. Periodic solutions In 1767 Leonhard Euler found three families of periodic solutions in which the three masses are collinear at each instant. In 1772 Lagrange found a family of solutions in which the three masses form an equilateral triangle at each instant. Together, these solutions form the central configurations for the three-body problem. These solutions are valid for any mass ratios, and the masses move on Kepler on ellipses. These five families are the only known solutions for which we have explicit analytic formulae. In the special case of the circular restricted three-body problem, these solutions, viewed in a frame rotating with the primaries, become points which are referred to as L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5 and called Lagrangian points. Additional solutions in work summarized in 1892-1899. Henry Poincaré established the existence of an infinite number of periodic solutions to the restricted three-body problem, and established techniques for continuing these solutions into the honest three-body problem. In 1893 Meissel stated what is nowadays called the Pythagorean three-body problem. Three masses in the ratio 3, 4, 5 are placed at rest at the vertices of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Burrow further investigated this problem in 1913. In 1967 Victor Shabaheli and co-workers established eventual escape for this problem using numerical integration, while at the same time finding a nearby periodic solution. In 1911, United States scientist William Duncan Macmillan found one special solution. In 1961, Russian mathematician Sitnikov improved this problem. See Sitnikov problem. In the 1970s Michel H. E. Q. N. O. N. and R. Brooker each found a set of solutions which form part of the same family of solutions. The brooker henon haji dimitri family. In this family the three objects all have the same mass and can exhibit both retrograde and direct forms. In some of Brooker's solutions two of the bodies follow the same path. In 1993 a solution with three equal masses moving around a figure eight shape was discovered by physicist Chris Moore at the Santa Fe Institute. This solution has zero total angular momentum. In 2013, Physicists Milanov Suvakov and Velko Dmitrasinovich at the Institute of Physics in Belgrade discovered 13 new families of solutions for the equal, mass zero angular momentum three-body problem, classical versus quantum mechanics. Physicist Vladimir Krivchenko used the three-body problem as an example, showing the simplicity of quantum mechanics in comparison to classical mechanics. The quantum three-body problem is studied in university courses of quantum mechanics. For a special case of the quantum three-body problem known as the hydrogen molecular ion, the eigenenergies are solvable analytically in terms of a generalization of the Lambert W function. However, this is possible only by taking certain assumptions which basically reduce the problem to a single-body problem within an energy potential. Generally even a two-body problem is not solvable analytically in quantum mechanics, since there is usually no analytical solution to the multiparticle Schrödinger partial differential equation. Some mathematical research in quantum mechanics is still dedicated either to finding a good numerical solution or finding ways to reduce the problem into a more simple system that can be solved analytically such as the Hartree-Fock method and the Frank-Condon principle. Sundman's theorem. In 1912, the Finnish mathematician Carl Frischiff Sundman proved there exists a series solution in powers of t one third for the three-body problem. This series is convergent for all real t, except initial data that correspond to zero angular momentum. However, these initial data are not generic since they have Lebesgue measure zero. An important issue in proving this result is the fact that the radius of convergence for this series is determined by the distance to the nearest. 
singularity. Therefore it is necessary to study the possible singularities of the three body problems. As it will be briefly discussed below, the only singularities in the three body problem are binary collisions and triple collisions. Now collisions, whether binary or triple, are somehow improbable, since it has been shown they correspond to a set of initial data of measure zero. However, there is no criterion known to be put on the initial state in order to avoid collisions for the corresponding solution. So, Sundman's strategy consisted of the following steps. Using an appropriate change of variables, to continue analyzing the solution beyond the binary collision, in a process known as regularization. Prove that triple collisions only occur when the angular momentum L vanishes. By restricting the initial data to L0, he removed all real singularities from the transformed equations for the three-body problem, showing that if L0, then not only can there be no triple collision, but the system is strictly bounded away from a triple collision. This implies, by using Corky's existence theorem for differential equations, there are no complex singularities in S-strip in the complex plane centered around the real axis. Find a conformal transformation that maps this strip into the unit disk. For example if S equals T one third and if then this map is given by. This finishes the proof of Sundman's theorem. Unfortunately, the corresponding convergent series converges very slowly. That is, getting the value to any useful precision requires so many terms, that his solution is of little practical use. Indeed, in 1930 David Beloruski calculated that if Sundman series were going to be used for astronomical observations then the computations would involve, at least, terms. End body problem. The three body problem is a special case of the end body problem, which describes how n objects will move under one of the physical forces, such as gravity. However, the Sundman and Wang series converge so slowly that they are useless for practical purposes. Therefore, it is currently necessary to approximate solutions by numerical analysis in the form of numerical integration or, for some cases, classical trigonometric series approximations. Atomic systems, e.g., atoms, ions, and molecules, can be treated in terms of the quantum and body problem. Among classical physical systems, the end body problem usually refers to a galaxy or to a cluster of galaxies. Planetary systems, such as star, planets, and their satellites, can also be treated as end body systems. Some applications are conveniently treated by perturbation theory, in which the system is considered as a two-body problem plus additional forces causing deviations from the hypothetical unperturbed two-body trajectory. In popular culture, the three-body problem is represented as a set of equations on the blackboard of Professor Barnhart in the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still. The three-body problem is both the title and the topic of a science fiction book by Chinese author Sixen Lu.